So um, the the breath obviously is our most vital um, force that we have living within us. And there's so much we can do in our yoga practice to support um, breathing. So, you know, I don't know, last night I taught a class in person, I had everybody raise their hand who had um, experienced some training in breath before they came to yoga, if they had ever had any um, education about breath work or training in breath work at all before they entered into the yoga grounds and not a single hand came up, um, which really meant that uh, for everybody in the room there, you know, we went decades, at least a couple of decades in our life without anybody instructing us about the breath. And I think this is true. If I had ever, each of you raise your hand on the computer, if you've had breath training before yoga. Um, and it's kind of, I think that's kind of amazing that we don't um, learn how to breathe well, because somehow you would think it would be a very natural process that nothing could screw it up. But so many things screw up our breath. Um, only in childbirth class. Yeah, in childbirth class, they, they did a little bit of breath work. Um, so uh, anyway, it's, it's amazing how many things that can go wrong with something that is um, so essential to our life. Uh, and it's, I think it's a very curious thing because the breath is one of the only activities of the body that can be under both unconscious and conscious control. You know, we have, um, we don't have to pay attention to our breath and we'll keep breathing all day long, all night long when we're sleeping. Um, but we have this ability to directly connect with and um, alter the breathing if we so choose. So um, as I've said a million times before, you know, uh, the danger of pranayama, um, you know, pranayama is the breath work of yoga. It's one of the eight limb paths uh, in the yoga, in the yoga sutra. It's part of our practice completely and utterly. Um, but the beautiful uh, tools that we learn in yoga to manipulate the breath. Um, the danger of doing those before learning how to just breathe well is like building a house on uh, sand instead of on a really good concrete foundation. And a lot of the layering of breath techniques that we learn through pranayama um, are wonderful. But if it's done without, um, you know, good biomechanics of regular breathing, we can really trap ourselves up and, and get a little caught into, into even more difficult patterns of breathing when we're trying to help ourselves and we end up just making things worse. So the first step is to uncover healthy, good, natural breathing, to return to our birthright of good, healthy, natural breathing. And that can only be discovered individually. You know, we, we don't all breathe the same. And it's difficult when you come into a yoga class where a teacher is having everybody breathe simultaneously, there can be something incredibly beautiful about that. You know, when you sync up with other people and you have this rhythmic breathing, but what's challenging about that is that not everybody breathes the same pace. And if you're um, trying to match somebody else instead of trying to uncover yourself, um, you can also get into trouble with that as well. So the first step is to just learn how to breathe, which is where, what we're gonna do a little bit today. Um, so let's go ahead and sit up straight and tall and find comfort in your posture. So this means that more than likely you need to be elevated on something. Um, I'm sitting on a bolster. Maybe you need more than that. You can do this standing. We're also going to practice this lying down, but we're going to start in a seated posture. So make sure that you are comfortable where you are not battling your body. Okay. So whatever that means for you, any position that that uh, affords ease in your body. But once you have a steady posture, just uh, feel into that. Can you feel into the grounding of your pelvis? Maybe rock forward and back a little bit just so you can feel that quality of being on the center of your pelvis, your pelvic bowl. And from that grounded, beautiful support, can you let your spine feel not only um, aligned in the sense of, of you're not slouching, but free. So resist the urge to push 
your spine in any one position. See if you can feel into your natural curves. Let there be fluidity in your spine. And then feel the sternum just become a little more stout, a little more alive and awake, lifting slightly. Let the sternum be a pedestal for the collarbones that can stretch out wide. And then imagine that your collarbones are like a hanger that you can rest your clothes on. So the clothes being the shoulder blades and your arms. So we have this sense of support that the spine and the sternum, the chest, the collarbones supports so that it becomes easier to not just habitually slouch, you know, this desire to sink and fall and collapse that we all have at times. And then perhaps open up your hands, turn your palms up toward the sky, and you can even lift them a little bit off your knees if you want and experiment with bringing your hands out a little bit to the side so that open heart becomes even more natural feeling. And then relax your arms into wherever you want them to be that's comfortable. Now melt something because you probably got a little strangely tense. Soften through your face. And feel the support of the body. Now that we've prepared the space, let's go ahead and begin to notice your breathing. That sense of opening up the channels of your body. There's, I'm not gonna direct you in any way, just be aware of how you're breathing right now. It's very, very difficult to, to observe your natural breath. The minute we put our mind to the task, usually we change our breathing a bit. So try to be as natural as you can. Just notice what moves when you inhale. What moves as you exhale. Pay attention to directional movement too, not just what is moving, but where it's moving to. On your inhales, do you have a sense that you're lifting up? or that you're going out or that you're going down, you know, what's the direction that's predominant? Same on your exhale. Try not to think about what's right or wrong or should or shouldn't, but experience what is. Notice if any part of your body is getting a little tense. We're going, to, we're going to experiment with this a little bit more when we lie down, but while we're here, let's start to just feel into the diaphragm. Notice it, its movement as best as you can. Where does it go when you inhale? Where does it go when you exhale? Do you have any sensation at all in your diaphragm or is it a little hidden from your view? All right, and very briefly, we won't be here for very much longer. Let's just feel those three diaphragms of the body. So we have the bandhas, which you know we consider in yoga as binds, but or blocks or or gates, but really think of it as more like a gate that's opening and closing rather than something that's locking. Okay, so the vocal cords, can you feel how they move apart when you inhale? And they draw back toward each other on our exhales. The vibration of these against each other is what makes sound. As we inhale, we open this gate. 
And as we exhale, we gently soften the gate back to closing. And we'll skip the actual diaphragm right now because that can get a little bit more complicated, more complex. So we have our vocal cords, we have our diaphragm, and then we have our pelvic floor. And think of these as, you know, the, the container of our breath. So of course we're breathing into our lungs, not our belly, but this is very important for our breathing. So feel now into the pelvic floor and see if you can notice if there's any movement. You don't have to make movement happen, but just pay attention to see if there's any movement in the bottom of your pelvis as you breathe in and out. And it's okay if you feel nothing. It's common for us not to allow the fullness of our breath to move into our pelvic diaphragm. But just like the vocal cords, our pelvic diaphragm can open and expand on our in-breath and can soften toward um, the center and draw up on our exhales. And I say soften, it's really a muscle contraction, but I want you to think of it softly instead of, you know, gripping. Okay, so these are the three gateways of breath, and we will explore this a lot in our practice today, but let's let go for a moment. Just take a breath into the full body. Place your hands together at your heart. Notice that stoutness of heart again. Bow in and create an intention for your practice. Let's release our hands and come to lie down on your back. I'm just reading the chats. Um, somebody else, uh, Ruth wrote, no, no training in breath, just, just asthma. So yes, asthma. Um, let's talk, Ruth. Not right now about it. Okay, so um, as we find our way onto our back, let's see if you can um, just get comfortable. We're gonna we're gonna move a little bit, of course, but. For now, just see if you can find a little stillness. You can bend your knees or straighten your legs, whatever is going to make you feel comfortable and at ease. So allow yourself to melt a little bit into the feeling of Shavasana. And we're going to just explore these three diaphragms again. All right, so let's start with the vocal cords. Everything's different when you're horizontal, so pay attention to that. So see if you can feel into the sense of the opening. And then hum a little bit or just make a little bit of noise on the exhale so you can feel the vocal cords vibrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can make any sound you want. That's just the sound I'm making, but you're heck, you're all by yourself. Make as much noise as you want. Uh, any kind of humming or chanting or um, sounding that feels right for you, let it go on the exhale. See if you can feel that nice vibration of the vocal cords. And then as you inhale, the sense of freedom as these vocal cords open up. Now you might notice that there is for sure a connection through your actual diaphragm and your vocal cords. So the next time you hum and exhale, feel what your actual diaphragm is doing. Because you're letting the breath out slowly, there's a there's a sense of restraint. Um, we're not just ah, breathing out. 
All right, now let that go and let's explore the diaphragm a little bit. So get your hands onto your chest and feel onto your sternum. Um, and then, it will, you know, your, that's your breastbone, your chest bone, okay? And gently palpate your fingers down so you get to the very bottom and there's like a little notch down there. Don't press hard. It's called your zygomatic process. It's tender usually, so don't press hard there. And then just feel into the arch of your rib cage. So the bottom of your ribs, and you can kind of use your fingers to palpate a little bit where the um, bottom edge of your ribs are. Notice the nice uh, angle that they go out on, how perfectly made we are. And you might notice if you're palpating that you might be a little tender in here. It might be a little tight in here. So just pay attention to how that bottom rib cage feels. Now this is the land of the diaphragm. So just feel, you can you know, kind of palpate however you want and feel around. So the diaphragm attaches to the inside edge of those bottom ribs all around the ribs, front and back. And there's also a fascial binding of your diaphragm to your pericardial sac around your heart. So the diaphragm is the base of the heart. Right, it's, at, it's at the base of the heart. And there's a deep connection between the movement of the diaphragm and the movement of the heart. Okay, so when we breathe, we give so much massaging to our internal organs, but only if we let our diaphragm be mobile and free. And there's another attachment of your diaphragm as you're still kind of feeling around, get into your very bottom ribs, down at the sides, maybe even feel into the back. The bottom, you know, your diaphragm is like a dome. You know, there's this broad, flat muscle, and it domes up into your rib cage when you exhale, and it flattens and drops down toward your abdominal cavity when you inhale. The bottom center of that diaphragmatic dome has a ligament that attaches right down onto your lumbar spine, the anterior portion of your lumbar spine. So the diaphragm is um, floating, but it's also anchored, and it's anchored in different places. It's anchored to your spine, it's anchored to your heart, it's anchored to your ribs. So if we get real tight in our diaphragm, we're not going to allow our ribs to move, our heart to move, even our spine to move. And conversely, if we're real tight in our ribs or in our spine, it's going to uh, send a signal to the diaphragm that mobility is not you know, what we're looking for. So we want to stay free as much as possible. So now let go of your palpation. Put your arms down at the ground. And see if you can feel, imagine that you know, cross section in your body of your diaphragm. And see if when you inhale, you can feel as if your diaphragm is broadening wide and flat so our belly needs to rise and fall to allow that diaphragm so this is abdominal breathing or belly breathing we're not breathing into our belly what we're doing is releasing the belly to receive the diaphragm think of you know how when you throw um, you're holding a napkin and you have a, I don't know, an orange in the napkin and you, you lift, you know, two, two people, one on each four corners of a napkin and you have an orange in there and you bounce it up and then it comes back down into the napkin and you have to give a little bit. You have to let the napkin give a little bit in order to receive the orange. If you had that uh, napkin pulled taut, tight, not mobile, and the orange was coming down onto the napkin, it would just bounce, right? There wouldn't be a lot of capacity for it to sink down into the napkin and return back up in the air. So let's imagine our diaphragm like this, where our diaphragm is, um, you know, the, the, both the orange and the napkin, you can look, think of it either way, but we have to have give so that your belly muscles, your abdominal organs, 
be the napkin that's actually releasing to let the diaphragm, which is uh, also releasing so that our breath can move in and out of our legs. So feel that recoil back of the ribs and the diaphragm back up into the chest cavity. Put your hands on your belly so you can feel that belly breath. Okay, now put your hands on your rib cage, okay. right? Kind of on the sides or wherever you're comfortable holding on. And feel the rib cage expand. So this is thoracic breathing. And the beautiful combination of abdominal breathing and thoracic breathing is representative of the fullness of the breath. All right, now harden your belly a little bit, engage your core. And notice this prevents us from really doing that abdominal breath. This is the napkin taught now. Notice where the breath now can go. So it moves into the ribs. Now notice when you tighten your abdominal core and your diaphragm gets the message that it can't go down anymore. Notice what happened to your vocal cords. Notice, try to keep that abdominal tension and now hum out on the exhale. It's gonna feel a little different right, than it was before. So this is um, when we are not as free in the breath. All right, now relax. Let your belly and ribs move together. And we're gonna travel down to our pelvic floor. And you can bend your knees or straighten them on the ground, whatever feels good. Uh, actually bend your knees just for this first little bit. So the pelvic floor is not always so easy for us to access. So let's pay attention here to um, some movement to help us. So imagine the pelvic floor, you know, is really tied to the whole pelvic movement, but we're gonna, we're gonna do this movement from the tailbone, which usually syncs up with the pelvis. So the, the sacrum and tail are not part of your pelvis, but they're very much related to the pelvic bones, obviously. All right, so when we inhale, drop the bottom tip of your tailbone down toward the ground and let the top of your sacrum lift up off the ground. So an anterior tilt and then move in the opposite direction as we exhale. Top of sacrum drops down, tail lifts up. Posterior tilt. So start with just that fluid movement of the pelvis and spine on our inhale and exhale. Where are we? Inhale to widen, broaden, open the pelvic gates, the pelvic floor. And as we exhale, Draw the pelvic floor slightly in. Now we can take over with our glute muscles. So let's try to keep the glute muscles a little tame as we do this. Feel the sit bones widen and open as you breathe in and anterior tilt. And feel the sit bones hug toward each other as you exhale and draw the pelvis um, into a posterior tilt. Now imagine the pelvic floor is opening like a flower on the inhale and then closing like a flower on the exhale. Do this slowly. Don't worry about your other diaphragms. We're just feeling into the pelvic floor diaphragm. Um, in yoga, this is called the mula bandha or the root, uh, root lock or root vine, but really think of it as your root gate. Don't worry if all this feels weird, right? So. You know, this is just exploring much more subtlety than doing a triangle pose. So pay attention to how that feels. All right, and then relax. Now we're gonna put all of this together and I promise we're gonna get up and start moving in just a moment. But remember, it's never a waste of time to explore the subtleties 
of your breathing anatomy. Okay. So let's open the gates. So an anterior to pelvic tilt, open up your throat a little bit, diaphragmatic and pelvic and uh, abdominal breath in. And then as you exhale, ribs recoil, diaphragm recoils, belly drops down, pelvic floor in, vocal cords hug toward each other. So feel the dance of these three diaphragms. If you want to make noise, you go ahead and make noise. If you want to feel like you're moving a lot, you can move a lot, or the movement can be very subtle or none at all. I'm moving my pelvis just because it helps me. It helps me understand the dynamic nature of these um, diaphragms opening and closing. So feel the breath, pelvis, belly, ribs, throats. Feel the exhale, throat, ribs, belly, pelvis. We're going to start turning this into more big movements of the body. So start with your your arms. You can stretch your arms out a little bit as you breathe in. Curl your arms in a little bit as you breathe out. Let's add our legs, star fishing open. Let your pelvis anterior tilt a little back arching as you breathe in. Exhale, knees and chest, chin up. A few more times, so feel that expansion. Feel that condensement. Open your three gates on your inhale. Gently close your three gates on your exhale. Okay, release your head down. Keep your knees up, rock a little bit, swaying side to side. Now, as we start to move like we normally do, try not to lose all the beautiful breathing you've just cultivated. So moving your hips or your knees now as you move into circles. As we come create more complex movement patterns, can you still feel your um, capacity to switch directions to open and close your diaphragmatic gates? Okay, to let your breath be as abdominal and thoracic and pelvic as you can let it become. So now let's open the knees away from each other and close them back in toward each other. Just feeling into that range of motion. All right, stretch out one more time, a big breath in, exhale, draw your knees into your chest and roll over onto your side. All right, look, we're up off the floor. All right, so hands and knees on the ground and start moving through some cat cows. So take what we did onto the ground into this posture. As you anterior tilt the pelvis and lift your tail and lift your head, inhale. Feel those diaphragms open, and as you exhale and round the spine and drop the tail and pelvic tilt into a posterior tilt, feel your exhale. Feel the mobility of your spine. Feel the fullness of your breathing. And feel free to move around anyway. So let's start with the pelvis. Maybe wag your tail or do some circles. Let your low back release any kind of movement that feels really good. And then we're going to move that deeper into our, our rib cage now and try to open up our rib cage. So let's do some rib cage circling. So imagine you're inside a tube. Drop your chest down toward the floor, over to one side, up toward the sky, over to the other side. 
um, exaggerate this movement. Feel the pliability of your rib cage, how mobile your thoracic spine is, how mobile your rib cage is. Can you breathe well while you're doing this? Switch directions, circle the other way. Make sure you're breathing. And find any movement in your neck that feels good and put it kind of all together. Let your shoulders, your neck, your ribs, your hip, your spine, everything's mobile. And then stretch back towards child's pose. Walk the hands forward. Feel into the opening of your shoulders, your rib cage here. Don't get so taut in the posture that you can't um, let your breath move. Okay, so um, back away enough to keep yourself with that su suppleness of the napkin not being taut in your body. Feel your breath travel down the back of you. Can you feel the diaphragm in the back of your ribs now? As you move into abdominal and thoracic breathing, can you feel your belly expand to your legs? Can you feel the full cylinder of your rib cage open? All right, let's walk our hands over to one side or the other and stretch now through your rib cage. Feel the hands drop into the earth and feel that. Um, Hip the sit bone drop into there and find that line down the whole side body. As you breathe in, notice all the fascia opening and stretching, the muscles between your ribs, those intercostal muscles opening. Let your ribs spread so that the sun of your breath can seep out through the space, the gaps in your rib cage. And back to center, over to the other side, feeling that sense of grounding through hand and sit bone. Keep your neck neutral and soft. Find your abdominal and thoracic breathing. So we're still breathing through our belly too. So feel the pressure of your abdomen against your legs. If you, if unless you know you're really wide with your legs, maybe you have lots of space. Feel the rib cage. Feel the spaciousness. And this is a very fascial stretch too, not just muscular. And then come back to center. Move about your spine, wag your tail, anything that feels good. We're gonna come up to dog pose. All right, so enjoy. Pedal your feet. Here we are in a full body posture now. See what it feels like to yield. Always remember that yielding and breathing are sisters to each other. They have this deep bond where they're, they're connected. You can't yield without breath. You can't breathe without yield. See if you can explore that. What does that feel like? Now with our body upside down, our diaphragm is moving a little differently. You still open the vocal cords as you breathe in. Open the pelvic floor. Feel how broad your rib cage can get. All right, let's walk our feet forward. Come into Uttanasana. Wag your tail, shake your shoulders, your head, whatever feels good. Breathing well. Inhale for a halfway lift. Feel how your breath in expands you. And as you exhale, feel that sense of condensement, relaxation, head drops, knees bend. Try that a couple of times where you're inhaling at your pace to find that spaciousness in the spine. And as you exhale, you're melting and folding letting the body curl. This natural response of inhaling to expand the body and exhaling to condense the body. All right, let's rise all the way up. 
Bring your arms to the sky. We've been down a lot. So if you're dizzy, do your thing to help you. Squeeze to the midline. Open up your chest. Okay, let's lean back a little bit. Cactus, open the arms. Feel the back body. Wake up, wake up back body. And then exhale. Forearms come to touch chin toward chest. Inhale, arms up. Big wide cactus. Exhale, forearms come to touch chin to chest. One more time. Big breath. Exhale, round in. Relax your arms down at your sides. Give your hands a good shake. All right, now standing a third position. We tried a little seated. We tried a little lying down. Now feel into the breath while you're standing. This often can be more challenging than lying down. Can you let your belly move? Put your hands on your belly. Can you let your belly move? So yes, of course, we, of course we want core strength, but the best way to have core strength is to have mobile core strength where we're not in lockdown mode of suck it in and hold it in, which is the message we get throughout our lives that pull in your belly. Right? So let go of your belly. See how many layers of letting go you can accomplish. See if you can find that there's a wave. Then on the exhale, there's a slight drawing in of the abdomen. And on the in breath, the belly moves out. This may be very different if you're a reverse breather, which I know I've already had the conversation about reverse breathing with a couple of you. So you might notice that this is difficult. All right, release your hands down for a moment. Now, see if this feels normal. As you breathe, this is backwards. This is not good breathing, but I want you to try it just so you get a sense of what you want to try to avoid. So as you breathe in, pull up. Pull your diaphragm up. Breathe up into your shoulders. And then as you exhale, drop down. Now, this may feel quite normal, right? This is... Um, this is not a really healthy way to breathe. This is reverse breathing where we pull our diaphragm up on our in-breath and release it down on our out-breath. Okay, so this is opposite of the direction that we want to have. So now go back to the maybe unfamiliar feeling of letting your diaphragm drop down as you inhale. Can you feel your belly? Can you feel your ribs? Okay, so it doesn't mean that the breath doesn't travel into the upper rib cage, but we're not um, subject to being locked only in our upper ribs. All right, inhale, lifting your arms. Exhale, floating forward, relax your neck, wag your tail, okay, loosen things. Inhale, halfway lift. Feel the body expand. Exhale, and melt. Step your left foot back. Right foot is forward, lunging. Go at your pace now. As we bend and straighten the front knee, see if you can move into your own breath pace. And notice if there's hopefully a natural tendency now that we've been working on the breath to feel expansive on the inhale and to feel a sense of surrender and condensement on the exhale. Can you feel the belly move, the ribs move, the chest move, so that you're not locked in only to that upper third of the rib cage, which is where many of us tend to live. All right, so find the lunge, reach on up, Notice now the hip flexors, so you can take your arms anywhere that serves breath. And as you open up the hip flexors of the back uh, leg, see if you can feel into your psoas a little bit and notice the connection between your psoas and your diaphragm. We're not going to explore that a lot today, but just pay attention. The psoas connects on the spine, the same place the diaphragm does. They're very much interrelated. So as you breathe well into the belly, 
feel if there's a little bit more expansion in your psoas. A little core strength on your exhale. Big belly with thoracic breath on your inhale. Hands down, back foot comes forward, fold and relax. Soften your neck. Inhale for a halfway lift. On your own pace, exhale and let that go. Step your right foot back, left foot is now forward lunging. The spine gets spacious, open up the chest. Start to feel that the breath is guiding your movements. It's the leader of your movements. Can you only go where breath takes you? Can you be patient enough to wait for the breath to guide you instead of racing ahead of your breath. Belly and thorax moving together. Find your way to a lunge, ground your legs. Notice the transitions. Do you stop breathing when you transition? Is there any place in your practice that you tend to be a breath holder? Serve the breath here. Put your arms wherever serves the breath best. Feel into that psoas diaphragm connection if you can. And no worries if you're like, I don't even know where my psoas is. Then don't worry. Just feel the openness of the front hip, the openness of the belly. I release the hands down back to dog pose. All right, notice how the breath changes when you're upside down. Give some um, consciousness to your yielding. Notice your breathing, pelvic floor, abdomen. Rib cage, neck, shoulders, throat. Notice. Come forward into a plank. Now we're back to that core strength. So when we engage our core, notice you're not going to allow your body to have that abdominal breathing now. Notice where does the breath go? Feel how your side ribs are going to expand. Now you're into that thoracic breath all the way up under the armpits, all the way to the sides and back of your ribs. Feel your exhales. Feel the closing of your other diaphragms to support what's happening. All right, find the ground. Lie down on your belly. Roll the shoulders a few times. All these neck muscles that tend to do a lot of our breath work for us. Really, they're unnecessary. Only you need to use those when we're, you know, breathing hard and fast. Okay, hands down, inhale, cobra pose. Feel the front body open, exhale, lower down. This is typically a place where we tend to hold the breath and to breathe high in the chest. So before you come up to another cobra pose, Take a breath here into the lower body, feel. And on your next inhale, see if you can breathe there as you push up. And once your breath is full, start to come back down. Try not to hold that top of the breath up in cobra pose. Last time. All right, put your hands underneath your head for a moment. Pick up your feet, windshield wiper your knees. And now we get to explore the breath in this position. All right, so notice what moves in the, your, the back of your body as you inhale. Notice what moves as you exhale. Can you feel your spine change shape? Can you feel your ribs change shape? Can you feel like where your kidneys are kind of puff out?
What does the condensement feel like on the exhales? Can you feel your belly move on the ground? How about your pelvic floor? Can you feel your pelvic floor move as you breathe in and out? Come up onto all fours. Swish around the spine, release any tension in your back. Let's take the left arm, lift it up to the sky. Take a breath in while you're here. And then exhale, slide that arm under. Now when you're twisting, it's a different kind of restriction on the three diaphragms. Notice, try to hum here and feel what the difference feels like in your throat. Notice what moves to allow breath in. Feel into the back of your rib cage. Take the opportunity to sense the diaphragm in the back body. Notice that the breath will try to travel into any nook and cranny it can find. Inhale, reach the arm up in the air, and comes down onto the ground. Second side, arm lifts. Take a breath while you're here before you do that twist. Another breath, open the chest, and when you're ready for the exhale, twist uh, into the pose. Notice if you want to hum on this side, if there's any shifting, in what's happening to the capacity to open your throat. Where is the breath traveling? All right, inhale, reach that arm back up in the air. Hand comes down onto the ground. Come back to child's pose. All right, we're going to come forward or up rather into dog pose. Long extension in the spine, feel the sit bones lift. Now take your feet wide on the mat and turn your toes in. And when you do this, notice the pelvic floor. There might be a little extra room in the pelvic floor now. See if your belly has lots of room to expand. We're making space for your diaphragms. And then move your feet together, touch your toes. And notice the changing shape of your breath. And right, walk your feet forward. Come into Uttanasana, rising on up, a big breath. Trace down through the center of your body and bring your hands down at your sides. Now we haven't done much of the, you know, traditional yoga postures, right? But notice if something is shifted in your body, even if it's just the subtlety of being able to relax your belly to let your breath move freely. Relax your neck and shoulders. You can kind of wobble, bobble your head around, loosen up, you can wiggle so that you can really feel that your neck and shoulders are not what's responsible for breathing. And this isn't to say that, so let your upper chest expand. We're not restricting the neck and shoulders, but we're not relying on them. Three diaphragms open, three diaphragms closing. Yield your feet, soften your knees. Imagine a fourth diaphragm at the bottom of your feet. All right, let's last move through vinyasa. Inhale, arms coming up, 
big breath in. As you exhale, we fold and relax. As you inhale, find a halfway lift. And as you exhale, melt again. Step back to a plank. So feel into that strength and the support of the core, the ability of the breath to find a different channel outward. Lower yourself down to the ground. Take your arms instead of a cobra, take your arms back next to your hips. Palms facing the ground. Inhale, lift everything up. Arms, legs, chest. Keep your neck neutral. Draw your chin slightly toward your chest. Breathe deeply. Notice the pelvic floor. And most importantly, as you inhale and exhale in this pose, notice the diaphragmatic push ups here. You're letting your diaphragm do the work. All right, relax, come up on tall fours, move your spine, swish, swish, swish. Last of the dog poses, stretch out through your spine. A big, beautiful inhale and exhale. Feel where the breath goes, feel the diaphragms, feel the yielding. Come down onto your knees. We're gonna find our back on the ground. Knees to your chest, rock a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a happy baby pose. Just see what your body's needing. Now let's cross your right thigh over your left thigh. Draw your knees toward your chest. Can you still belly breathe? Can you still thoracic breathe? Can you relax your neck and shoulders and your head? Okay. Put your feet down, change sides. Left leg on top of right, knees draw in. Breathing well. Put your legs down on the ground, big star, giant breath in, exhale, knees into your chest, head comes up, put your feet on the ground, lift your hips, scoot them over to the right a couple of inches, knees come up and drop them left. Again, as you twist, notice the changing breath, let your head be heavy. Come back to center, scoot your hips over to the left and drop your knees to the right. Big fluid breath, heavy head, heavy shoulders. Okay, come back to center. And anything else you need that you can do, but we're moving into Shavasana. Now, if you're at all cold in this pose, cover yourself. Um, no greater um, buzzkill for breath and for comfort than to suddenly be cold. Cold usually makes us contract. So as you rest here, return to the beautiful natural state of breathing. Notice if you've been able to shift how you breathe, just even a little bit. We have so many thousands and thousands of breaths a day. The more conscious we become of some of them, the more we are able to use our breath to support our well-being. 
if we can make our unconscious patterning be one of a wealthy breath, something that serves and gives us prana. This is so much better for our health than a poor breath. So notice how deep gratitude as you begin to rest for the ease of breathing. Let your limbs get heavy, including your head, including your spine, pelvis. Let your breath wander where it will. There's nothing to bind. We're not trying to catch a lightning bug in a jar. There's no, uh, there's nothing to hold. There's nothing to grasp. We're letting the breath be free within us. See if you can feel into the fact that you are nothing but breath, that the breath is what you are. See if you can melt the strata of physicality a little bit more. Move into that airy fluidness, prana. To feel our body again, feel the deep breaths. Feel the fullness of breath and see if fullness includes your pelvic floor, your belly, your chest. Let's wiggle your fingers and your toes. Invite any movement that serves. Move slowly. Eventually finding your way to a comfortable seat. Take your time, come onto your side and curl for a breath or two. When you come upward, notice if it's, if it's just comfortable to breathe well. If you feel connected to your breath, if you feel calm, centered, a little more free. Just 
Let's place the hands together at the heart. Offer your intention, your energy for another. Just offer, let it ride on your breath. Namaste. One of the beautiful gifts we can give to everyone in our life is good breathing. When we breathe well, we emit a calmness, a groundedness that is attractive to everyone around us, that can be soothing and supportive to everyone around us. So not only are you giving yourself this gift, but you're giving everyone else the gift too. Thanks, everyone.